Hey y'all, welcome back to DC Motorworks. Got here next to me a 2007 SL65. This is the R230 chassis that was ran from 2003 till 2012. Like I said, this is the 65 model, so this is the 6 liter bi turbo V12. Uh, besides the Black Series, this was the top of the line SL at the time. You can see we've got this one ready to get some major service. We're actually doing an engine out on this one. It's due for motor mounts, which on this particular chassis with the V12 requires the engine to be removed. On the uh, S and the CL, you can actually still get them out even with this engine, but on this particular one, you cannot. So we've got this engine coming out. We're gonna show you how it's separated. Everything comes out the bottom. We're gonna show you some of the common problems on this chassis SL as well. So let's get started. So here we've got on the floor the M275 6 liter AMG bi turbo V12. Removed from the 230SL. See, we got the transmission over there also. Here I'm going to show you why this engine is out and what are the other jobs it's going to get while it's removed. Do some of those while you're in there that we're so fond of in the automotive industry. So the main reason we pulled this engine out is for your motor mounts right here. So on the early 275 engines and then all of the 230SL chassis with this engine, the engine mounts, you can see one bolt there. So there's three bolts that bolted to the motor mount bracket arm and you can see you just can't get to them so what you have to do to replace these is pull the engine out which it comes out the bottom as you see here we've got the subframe and everything out and the transmission over there but we have to lift the engine off the subframe here and actually remove the motor mount bracket arms off the engine block so that you can access the three bolts to replace these. So these are an often neglected part on these just because it's such an intensive job on these SLs to replace them. You can see our old ones here, some of our old parts. This one actually was totally separated on the driver's side. And a little fun fact, we've got the subframe on the table here. With the old engine mounts, this bell housing was actually resting on these wood blocks we have here. You can see now it's raised over an inch just with fresh engine mounts. This is gonna make a big difference in the way this car feels. The client was complaining of how rough the engine feels also with this one you have the engine lifting out under hard acceleration and high torque you'll see where the engine will lift out of the engine bay because of that broken engine mount so on the side we're going to point out a few other things so this is your abc pump here this is your active body control suspension pump it also runs your power steering it is a tandem pump so there are two halves to it it does run individually though, so there's a separate fluid reservoir for each side. And very commonly, in place, this is called your pulsation damper or accumulator. It has many different names. But this dampens the fluid flow and pressure coming out of the pump. When these fail, you'll get a strange like humming noise around like 12 to 1400 RPM. And that's actually a hammering effect of the fluid and can cause lines to blow out on the suspension and make the struts leak and so forth so it's good to keep up with those also going to do the main pressure line which we've got the new one in the car already you can see here it was starting to leak around the crimps which is pretty common 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get that taken care of. And one of the main big jobs on these as well are the O-rings for all your coolant lines for your turbos. So there's an O-ring here, one on the bottom for the coolant lines. We go ahead and put new gaskets on the oil lines as well, but these O-rings dry out and shrink from all the heat and they'll start leaking coolant. And this is a engine out job as well. So we're saving the client by doing these preemptively while we've got it out for other work. I'm sure you all have heard about these V12 coil packs. So these are actually twin plug engines. As you can see, there's two coils for each cylinder. Actually offset, so this is one, two, three, and so forth. 24 spark plugs and only two coil packs. There's one on either side. And they list for, I think it's 12 or $1,400 a piece. It's about six hours labor to do both sides in the car. Thankfully these, you can always check these if you're looking at one of these V12s. This is your date code. So this is 2018. 37th week so these were done not too long ago so we're not too concerned about these but related to that you have your ignition module this is what controls each of the coils and this one is original it's 2006 week 17 so we'll be keeping an eye on that maybe suggest replacing it there is actually a good friend of mine Clark Rupp over on the west coast he rebuilds these ignition coils and he actually just came up with what he calls the boost box which totally replaces this module and relocates it to where you can keep it away from the heat of the engine you can check him out at v12icpack.com we're very fond of all his work in keeping these engines going at a lesser cost so some other stuff we did while this one was out the uh, water pump, these have done a few here and there as they've aged, the bearing in the water pump starts to fail and the pulley will start to walk around. It makes quite a racket and will also start leaking. So we got a new water pump on here with the upper hose here. Went ahead and took the opportunity. All these idler pulleys like to fail. They'll start getting noisy. So while it's all apart, you know, in the car, there's no space here. So while it's all apart, we're placed the tensioner, all three idler pulleys, there's a new water pump. I actually don't see a lot of trouble out of the water-cooled alternators. They don't seem to leak or fail very often, so they're pretty reliable. Also went ahead and replaced all the plastic vacuum lines. This controls your secondary air injection system. Very commonly, these lines will break inside of this heat sheathing. You'll get secondary air codes and to an untrained shop or you know owner, they'll start replacing the, uh, we call it the hair dryer, but the secondary air pump, the valves, they'll be chasing it. And replace this solenoid also just because you're not getting full vacuum because one of these lines is cracked internally. So all those have been replaced. When you do get that code, it just shows secondary air function chain. It doesn't actually give you anything specific as to why it's not operating. So you have to actually do some diagnosis work. In that case, the code does not tell you everything. So rarely also, these are your diverter valves on the turbo. There's a little diaphragm in here and spring along with this plastic cover that controls the wastegate diverters on the turbos. And in really hot climates and with some age, we have seen these diaphragms start to tear and you'll lose boost pressure. So we went ahead and renewed those. And one of the main things on any 
Mercedes engine of this era, whether it's the 112 V6, 113 V8, these 275s, or even the early iteration of this engine, the naturally aspirated version, which is the 137, it's the rear main seal. They love to leak on these engines, and usually it's just from this plate. So there's a plate and then your radial seal here, and the plate will usually leak. The plates are made out of magnesium usually, and as magnesium corrodes, it turns powdery. You can see some of the powdery here, and it'll actually release the silicone glue that's sealing it to the crankcase and will leak oil. So it's rare that the actual radial seal will leak oil. Got that taken care of. Here you can see some more of the vacuum lines that we did. See, it goes all the way down into a vacuum reservoir under the intake manifold between the cylinder heads. And you'll see some on these, um, a very rare failure, but there's a O-ring for the oil supply down here in the valley that can create a substantial oil leak. Those are very rare. I've never seen one in person. The only one I personally know of is the one that uh, Legit Streetcars has, where you have to remove a cylinder head in order to get to all the bolts to get it out. So we replaced all these gaskets in here as well. So all the common issues on the engine, for the most part, will be taken care of so that this owner doesn't have to worry about doing an engine out service for a very long time. So really the only other thing worth mentioning as far as engine wise is on the intercooler circuit the actual separate water pump runs the intercoolers. So these are water to air intercoolers for the turbochargers. So you've got water running through here, coolant, and when the air passes over it, that's what cools down your charge air temperatures. You can see here the cap reservoir for this. There's not even really a reservoir. So the only way to properly bleed this is to either vacuum bleed it or to run the pump with these fittings open. And those use a R12 style fitting. So we usually like to vacuum fill them. Or even there's a update for the, when these engines got updated in 2014, that comes with a little reservoir. So you have to put a couple new hoses and a reservoir on it. Kind of pricey though, it's about $800 in parts. So you like to make sure these are vacuum filled it has a nice fresh pump. The Bosch 010 is the most popular. Usually these later models already have it. 